Hi as well, welcome back to the shop and today we're talking about turbos and compression ratios. So, why do we have to reduce the um, compression ratio when we turbo an engine that's naturally aspirated? So, this is all back to the combustion video and all the rest of it where if you have an engine like this that has a 10 to 1 compression ratio your um, let's just say that your uh, compression temperature just before ignition is about 220 degrees C we'll just I'm just plucking that number out my ass um, but let's just say it's about that this is 10 to 1 when you compress a mixture um, it is based on the density that is very very important so the density of this air is around atmospheric one atmosphere which is 14.7 psi about there or a bar and a bit tiny bit more um or 101,000 pascals if you want to put it that way or 101 kilopascals anyway get on with it for fuck's sake so what happens is is that our compression ratio um, raises when we compress a gas the temperature raises the temperature rises with inside that gas um, and our auto ignition temperature we we want to hover just below our auto ignition temperature so we don't get detonation pre-ignition or pre-ignition detonation I'm just, I want to say it that way around pre-ignition comes usually before detonation so this is what we're trying to do um, if we then cram in this is like I said this is at 14.7 we're not going to talk about this, we're just going to say it's 100% volumetric efficiency. We're not going to talk about going higher or inertial filling, stuff like that. So if you then put a turbo on this, and this turbo sticks in another bar's worth, so let's just say it's 14 point, or an atmosphere's worth, let's just say we boost this up by, um, 50, you know, by, by 15 psi, let's just, say, let's just say we're putting 30 in here. We'll just round this up and say it's 15 and 15. If we're doing that, when we compress that gas, we are going to reach 220 degrees C before we're at top dead centre. So basically we've compressed it. Um, we're getting to something like, I don't know, 8.5 to 1 when we reach 220 degrees C, which is the highest we want to go because any higher than that will mean pre-ignition detonation bad things happen but we're compressing to 10 to 1 so by the time we get to 10 to 1 our temperature let's just say is 350 degrees c All right boom that's it it's above your auto ignition temperature of your gasoline there mixture you are going to pre-ignite and detonate like a motherfucker which is going to blow up it's going to fuck up your crankshaft it's going to fuck up your conrod because the piston's on its way up and now you're applying a force down um, so you're resisting that force, so the crankshaft's going to jerk like a dickhead. It's going to put massive torsional stresses on your crankshaft. It's going to put compressive stresses on your conrod. They're going to bend. It's just all going to turn to shit. And your piston, because when you start getting detonation, it's going to start blowing chunks in your piston. Your piston's going to just turn to mush gravy. Now you've got the added stress of your piston is getting a good fucking hammering from above and your conrod uh, wrist pin and crankshaft are under so much stress. Generally what happens is, is the conrod goes through the piston because the piston is now getting hotter and hotter and it's going to bang to fuck and there's all this compressive strength and it's just going to push through and that's generally what happens is you end up losing a piston. Ends up fucking, the rod goes through it and it's all sayonara, see you fucking later. So obviously because we've done this we want to bring it back down to our 220 before um, pre-ignition and detonation starts to occur. So hence we need to reduce our compression ratio. Now people think that, well hang about, you've got a, a high compression ratio of 10 to 1. Reducing that, does that mean that you lose power? Compression ratios are more about efficiency than actual power. <coughs> the fact of the matter is, is we're sticking in. 30 psi of air and we're going to go with pressure and density and just say they're exactly the same for instance it's a slight differential there but we'll ignore that um you're putting uh, two times the air in 
which means we can put two times the fuel in. And even at eight, even if we just say we run 8.5 to one instead of our 10 to one that we originally had, or we run nine to one, we've got twice the amount of air and twice the amount of fuel, which means that hopefully if we had brilliant um, uh, thermal efficiency, we're basically burning twice the amount of fuel and twice the amount of air. So we should be able to liberate a lot more uh, energy and get a lot more pressure out of that to force that piston down so you get more power at the end of it. The whole restriction here with compression and with all these other things is basically this thermal property of when you compress a gas the temperature rises. Um, how did they run stupid compressions back in the day? They used leaded fuel, they used TEL. Um, and with TEL or just basically leaded fuel, this actually suppresses um, knock, uh, pre-ignition, detonation. Basically lead is a, heav uh, is a heavy element and it absorbs a lot of the heat. So in the actual gas itself, in our fuel air mixture, it can basically retain a lot of that heat so we stay away from this knock temperature. This is why these cars could run higher compression ratios and stuff like that, which leads on to more efficiency and all the rest of it. Um, and it means you can also have more power because at the end of the day, uh, you can compress more, which means that basically your flame front, um, flame propagation is usually faster. It's a generally, when you increase compression ratios, you, it's a, we'll go into it, but you can get more um, volume, vol, not volumetric efficiency, you get more thermal efficiency, which basically means you get higher torque numbers to a degree. There's a balancing act, and we'll talk about that balancing act, the trade-off between one and the other. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.